Thank you. Okay, we're going to get ready and get started again. We're going a little out of order, though. Um, we have uh, Kevin McClooney on the line from Johnson, and Laurie had mentioned her, his tool. It's a CFS Command and Data Dictionary Utility tool, and uh, I'll let you take it away, Kevin. Can you hear me okay? Uh, yes, I can hear you just fine. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, uh, you can go to the uh, second slide if you would. Yep, we're there. Okay, um, uh, I guess there is quite a bit of lag because I'm still seeing the first one. Uh, the, uh, oh, there it goes. Okay. The uh, CFS uh, Command and Data Dictionary Utility, or CCDD, um, is a, a generic program. It's used for creating and, and maintaining, manipulating, and utilizing the data, uh, command and telemetry data for a CFS project. Uh, the tool was designed to be an authoritative source for the command and telemetry data. In other words, it would be the one source from which all other products uh, would be based so that there wouldn't be, uh, or at least certainly reduce the uh, possibility of errors being introduced if there are multiple sources. Uh, the program is written in Java. It uses a Postgres database, uh, so it's very cross-platform. It has been released uh, as an open source software on GitHub. Uh, and it has an extensive amount of documentation. There's like 260 pages of user's guide and a 50-page tutorial. So uh, it's uh, very well documented. Next slide, please. Just uh, I obviously don't have enough time uh, or an interface where I can show you the application itself. Uh, so all I've included is uh, just a little bit of basic information on the interface. Uh, the data is handled via tables that are very much like working with a spreadsheet. Uh, the content of these tables is completely user definable. Uh, the program, at when you initially start it, uh, comes with definitions for commands and for structures or for inputting the telemetry data. Uh, but the user can build on those. They can create their own types of tables for storing other types of information. Um, and so forth. Uh, then it just becomes a matter of populating the data. The, the application stores this in the, the database. Uh, all the database transactions are, are hidden from the user so they don't have to worry about all the Postgres. Uh, but it's very familiar with the use of the um, spreadsheet-like interface. Uh, as with a spreadsheet, you can input data via like cut and paste operations from the system clipboard. Uh, and there's also other ways of importing data, which I'll mention later. Uh, some of the uh, features of the application is it uh, does try to prevent uh, entering errors into the uh, tables. For instance, if you create an array, it automatically creates the array members. So you can't create an array of, say, six and only have five members defined, something like that. It, it takes care of that for you. It won't allow you to assign data types that are invalid um, for, say, if you've got uh, an enumeration or a, something with a bit length, it won't let you assign a float to that. Um, the data types are configurable, so you can add and change the names to whatever the data type uh, you want. It comes with a standard set, like uint eights and floats and so forth. Uh, the program allows uh, macro values to be used, so you can insert information and without having to hunt for it throughout all your, your tables, you can make a change in one place in the macro value and it will update everything throughout the uh, rest of the table information. Uh, it also allows for uh, assignment of message IDs. Uh, so you can set up uh, fields or columns of in the table for handling message IDs and then have the program assign them and it will prevent uh, duplicate IDs from occurring. Uh, if you assign them manually, there's a way also to look and see that if you've accidentally assigned any duplicates, it will flag those. Um, so that's as much as I'm going to describe of the interface. Um, uh, it's the, the picture I've shown on this particular slide will give you an idea of the, sort of the look and feel. Uh, next slide, please. All right. I'm going to talk about the uh, data access. Uh, the application just stands in between. Postgres database and the outside world. Uh, there's a couple of ways of getting the data out and utilizing it. Uh, the main method is via script access. Uh, the application allows scripts to be executed 
from the application itself. The, app, the scripts can use uh, predefined uh, requests, I guess you could call it. Uh, they're, they're Java functions that they can call and get the data to then use it to construct uh, the output products, um, like the C header files, or if you want to create ITOS record files or display files or uh, CFS tables or whatever, anything that you can, you need the data, the, the command and telemetry data for, um, can be provided to a script, and the script then outputs the, uh, creates the files for you. Um, so it can be uh, fairly well automated. The scripting languages, uh, it supports any of the JSR223 scripting languages, and there's a couple of dozen of those, uh, but the, it's been specifically tested with uh, the ones shown in the the diagram there, JavaScript, Python, Ruby, Groovy, and Scala, uh, but others should work uh, as well. Uh, the program comes with a number of sample scripts in, in these languages uh, for building like header files and all, so it gives the user something to start with. They aren't just starting from scratch. Um, the other method of getting data from the application is via an embedded web server. Uh, you turn that on, and then you can make a request uh, to the application, which will then pull the data and, and send it back to the, the web uh, application in JSON format. Uh, next slide, please. OK, the other method of exchanging data is through the import and export uh, capabilities. The application will allow uh, the data in the database to be exported in either comma-separated value files, CSV files, uh, JSON format, uh, or XML files in the EDS or XTCE formats, and just to the clipboard via cut and paste. Uh, and then it can also import data in these formats that can that is then converted and stored into the database. So uh, the, the data that way is, is essentially two-way. Uh, next slide, please. So this last slide is on the use cases, uh, ways that the program would be used. Uh, the way it was envisioned was the standalone method, I, what I've got it named here. You use the CCD application to enter your data, to make changes. Uh, you've written scripts, and then the user will execute the scripts using the data and produce the uh, output products that are needed. Uh, another way that the application be used is a supplier to other tools. So the application, again, is used as it is expected to be used. You input your data and all. And then you export that data in some format that the a, a secondary tool needs um, and can understand. And then they can use it to produce the products. So as an example, you can export the data from the database uh, as an EDS file or as an EDS format, which can be incorporated into a, a larger uh, electronic data sheet, uh, and which can then be used to, however, you know, whatever tools you have used or using to, they can understand that format to output the products. Uh, and the third way is as a data interface, where the program takes in or imports data from another source, uh, constructs the database from that, and then uses that information to run the uh, scripts to produce the output. So in my example here, um, let's say you had an existing le electronic data sheet with the command and telemetry data in it. You could feed that data to CCDD. It would construct a database of these tables, and then it could use its natural or normal interface to scripting languages to then create the products. And in this case, that makes the CCD tool just a sort of a conversion tool that stands in between the, uh, the original source and those products. So uh, that's my quick 10-minute uh, <laughs> description of the application. Are there any questions? Here we go. Just a minute. I know that 
the uh, tool was built for CFS, is there anything inherent in the actual tool that makes it only work for CFS? No. Uh, well, let me qualify that. It, it is, there are a few things that are tailored towards CFS, but that does not restrict the tool from being used from any other type of things. It was built with CFS in mind. Uh, and there are a few things that are a little bit sound CFS-centric, uh, but overall, the, it is not really restricted to CFS. I was looking for trying to create a, another uh, interface or to, to be able to share data products between, for instance, uh, DDS or uh, SPA or some others, and I'm trying to figure out how applicable something like this would be. Uh, well, I'm not familiar with the, what you described. Uh, data sharing in what way? Basically, to share the basically to share the dictionary between two different kind of tool domains. Okay. Well, if the if they can find a common format, um, uh, then the data could be shared. I mean, it can output it, say, in a CSV file, but it may need a translation tool for the other tool to be able to understand the contents of that file. So it can export its data. Um, uh, but then it becomes a question of if the, you know, the, the other tool has to be able to understand the import format. Uh, if the other tool was uh, web-based, it could request the data, but again, it's going to have to translate their, their response into something it can understand. But uh, it, there should not be a reason why you couldn't do that, but it does imply there has to be something in between to make sure that they're, they're using the same uh, format for the information. So one of the things, when you're talking about CSVs, uh, you know, import, import and export into CSVs. Um, you, are those also just simply scripts that go bidirectionally in and out of the database? Uh, no, the, uh, the import and export is, is hard coded into the application. Um, so it's expecting a, a, a specific format that it reads, um, it, which is detailed in the, the user's guide. Uh, but it was primarily it's there for you could actually create the tables in a spreadsheet, uh, save that, and then have the CCDD application in just that CSV file created by the spreadsheet so that you don't have to, uh, in case you, weren't, you didn't have access to the application itself, you could still create data and then have people, or you know, you had people from different locations putting the data in um, using an external uh, editor of some sort. Any other questions? Nope. Yes. Oh, sorry, we do need a mic for the. Oh. Will this uh, generate stored command tables? And what was the last? Oh, help. Yeah, could this be helped in generating stored command tables? Is the question. Uh, again, it's uh, if the data is in the database that are needed for the stored command tables, then a script can be written that would produce those tables using the data. So yeah, that's something it could easily do. All right, thanks. Any other questions? Nope. All right, thanks, Kevin. Appreciate your support from down south. <laughs> okay. It's warmer down there for